hear me? Uh, no, I, I have my mic right here. Um, <clears throat> we can see there's less crowd this time than last time. Of course, uh, we are dealing with two different subjects. Last night I lectured on Vivix in Chicago. Uh, we had the same issues. We had to wait for half an hour for more chairs. Uh, so, again, there is uh, three more, uh, two in Spanish and one more in English uh, in, uh, this year. Uh, uh, the, uh, the topic of the <coughs> we want to talk about today was uh, the brain function and the hormonal function, the, the gland function in the body, the depression, the anxiety, the insomnia, the, the things that the brain does, how come there is so much we see nowadays of that? There's so many people going to psychologists, psychiatrists, so many people taking some medications uh, for depression and anxiety and so on, so on, so on. And this is happening from younger age to older age, a lot. So we have to talk tonight about the role of nutrition and that. Um, I don't know if I showed them in a way or not. But um, the uh, we to understand the subject, we have to really understand the the situation we see with our patients uh, regarding to uh, mood problem. It's uh, in, the, in the earlier days, we used to think uh, some people just are crazy and they need uh, attention and they want to go to a doctor and they just want to get pills and drugs. And, and then I, I didn't think that is really uh, the case because um, before I was a doctor, uh, before I was a medical doctor, I mean, I went to uh, medical school in Mexico, in Guadalajara. And uh, because I couldn't afford the tuition here, I went there. So when I went there uh, to go to medical school, I thought that I'm going to learn in English. They turned out to be they teach in Spanish. So I had to read in English, take the exams in Spanish. And then that was not very nice. But that is that what happened. But in the process, I was hired to be a professor of uh, nutrition and biochemistry in the same university, they, they look at my resume and they want somebody uh, with my qualifications. So I was a student and a professor at the same time. Uh, during that time, I did my rotation in a hospital. I don't know any, any of you have been in Guadalajara before. Uh, if you are, if you have, there is, there is a big hospital in in the north side of the city, uh, near Providencia, where I used to live, uh, it's, it's called San Juan de Dios, the name of the hospital. It's a psychiatric hospital. And it, it holds approximately 3,000 uh, patients. So 3,000 are people that are supposedly crazy. And when I did my rotation there, I found ages young and middle age and old, I find men and women. And then I just learning from my professor, uh, Dr. Ibarran, what is what to give. So he said give this drug, this drug, shock therapy, drug, shock therapy, you know. So I'm just following, you know, what he does. And then then I start um, I started questioning uh, this technique that everybody's getting all those same drugs either drives to make them down or drives to make them up. There are downers and uppers, downers and uppers. And that's all I saw. I said, 3,000 people and all these doctors, that's all they do? So could it be that these people have some kind of nutritional problem? Uh, could it be they have hormonal problem? Uh, could it be they have genetic problem can be corrected by something like physics, for example? Uh, could it be uh, all of that? Well, it turned out to be that Dr. Baran believed in preventive medicine like me. When I was talking to him, he said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to do research. I said, well, it's all yours. You know, whatever you want to do, do. So I went to Los Angeles, and then I took, I took lots of Shackley products uh, that was most of it donated. 
uh, by people to the hospital. Uh, and uh, we did research using chakra products that time, which is uh, the Vitalia and the protein those days, and uh, basically the complex and the, the regular stuff was available in 1971. So in, when we started the research, start giving these people uh, the vitamins and watch their behavior. We divided into two groups. A group who stayed on drugs, and a group who had taken uh, the nutrition and the drugs, uh, because we could not re remove the drugs legally from them, uh, because they can kill somebody or, or they do something. They almost killed me myself, you know. I, uh, I remember that day I went to make rounds, and uh, the doctor says to me, be sure to take the electric shock thing with you. It sounds like you, you, you have taser, you know, with you. I said, why? He said, well, you, you never know you can get attacked. And I said, no, I'm seeing women. I said, you never know you might get attacked by women. <laughs> sure enough, I got in the room and closed the door and sit at my desk and told them, okay, all of you sit over there. And then they were not sitting. They were coming toward me. And then, you know, they have, they have fantasies, ideas, uh, uh, noises maybe, they hear voices, who knows what they have. Uh, so I had to use the, the teaser gun with them. I told them I'm going to use this if you come any closer. And I got out, got the police to come with me, and I did my, my work uh, after somebody came, a guard came with me. So in any case, uh, after about six months, we are giving them the supplements, the group that were taking the supplement, the depressed ones were 50% less depressed. The one who had psychosis or an anxiety that led to psychosis or schizophrenia, uh, that, that also were improved, were much calmer. Uh, and the one who had difficult to sleep, they were sleeping better at night. Are you following me or not? Yeah. So that opened the door. Uh, even Dr. Varan himself thought about the same thing. Maybe, this, maybe nutrition can work in, uh, to do something for people who have uh, uh, problems with uh, emotion or feeling. So the, when we talk about depression and, and anxiety and stress and insomnia and all of the stuff we, we put right here, we basically are talking about uh, things that happens and we've seen only in, in, in developed world. We don't see it as much in underdeveloped countries. Uh, I don't, if you look at South America, for example, right here, and this is the United States, you will see from here down, uh, you don't see many uh, uh, problems with uh, depression. You don't see many problems with anxiety, Alzheimer. You don't see that as much. And then when we go to Africa, on the other side of South America, and the other side right here, we also we don't see that. But if we go to Europe right here, and, and this in Europe, we see that. But we don't see it, for example, in India right here. We, we don't see as much. So there are some environmental issues that affect the brain, affect the body. And I try to understand it. So what I try to do is I try to um, first uh, first I have treated uh, you know close to fifteen thousand people with these problems over my career. So I know what works, what doesn't work. We have only very very few uh, patients take some medications uh, for depression and or for anxiety or for insomnia, and that. We have to give those medicine when we have to, when we know, when we know that the problem of the of stress is overwhelming, it's going to destroy the person. Then we have to step in and give them something with the nutrition. The uh, if we look at the the picture from 1900 to to the, today, uh, 2008, we find out that there is rise in the number of patients 
who have depression. And psychologists and psychiatrists can tell you that. There is tremendous rise in consultations. Uh, there is tremendous rise in ADD, for example. There is tremendous rise in anxiety. There is tremendous rise in suicide. Uh, there is rise in Alzheimer. There is rise in Parkinson. Uh, there is rise in lots of things to do with the brain. You follow me so far? Okay. So for me, when I was graduated from medical school, I tried to include uh, nutrition in the, in the picture, but I didn't know how exactly to do it. So I, I, first I tried to uh, look at the, uh, the environment that these people living in, in those countries. The environment itself uh, has, from 1900 until 2008, it has more chemicals in the air and the water and the food. And there is more stress, <coughs> right or wrong? The question is this, can or is it possible that this environmental issue affect these people. Could it be some of these environmental issues also affect the cell, that the nucleus of the cell, like we talked about Vivix last time, that there will be some mutation in the, in the, in the DNA that the child was, was born from a parent that has schizophrenia, they develop schizophrenia, or they have depression, they will have depression. So there are some genetic factors that we can reverse was something like rivets. So, but in the meantime, we we have to we have to look at the things that we can correct, and the things we can correct is the environmental part of it. But that was not enough. We looked also. Uh, oh, there is another thing. There was also increase in the amount of sugar consumption, which we talked about that last year about syndrome X and metabolic syndrome. How much that affect also. Uh, and anxiety and depression, and I think you remember that. Or at least I hope you remember that. So the, the, the factors that I looked at was how is the nutrients between 1900 to 2008 that people need? How are they? We know there are certain nutrients we must have. We must have protein. And we find out the consumption of animal protein went up, while the consumption of plant protein went down. Is this important to the lecture we're talking about today? It is important. Because when you're dealing with plant protein, you're dealing with products that's going to give you lysine, glutamine, uh, isoleucine, uh, tryptophan, it's going to give you things that the brain uses as a neurotransmitter. Are you following me or not? Mm -hmm. Where the animal protein is not going to give you that. The plant protein will give you that. So the consumption of the animal protein, uh, we're not saying animal protein are bad. We are saying that as a human, we are better <laughs> off consuming most of our protein from vegetable source like lentils, like beans, uh, versus uh, meat all the time, or beef all the time, or turkey all the time. Uh, you follow me or not? Uh, even fish uh, is great, but it's full of mercury, and full of lead, and stuff like that. We have to be careful. Some of those meat might have hormones. They might have, we might have problems from those hormones also. And the question, can can this change of the protein diet also contribute to the rise in, uh, in the depression and, and anxiety and all of that stuff? If you, if you are a chemist, or at least you act like you're a chemist with me and use your brain, you have to understand the human body, your, your health of what you eat, okay? And if you put something bad, you're going to get something bad. If you have something good, you got to put something good. So let us not be so uh, in denial 
that we, 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 we live at McDonald's and Burger King and all the stuff, that we are a healthy society. We are not. Because there are, they have their own protein, plus they have other chemicals with it. We looked also, we find out the consumption of sugar went up and the consumption of whole wheat bread went down. From the, how many of you here attended my lecture on omega-3 uh, uh, or syndrome X last year? Here, if you remember, okay, that's good. You remember we talked about there is a difference between eating a piece of bread and a fruit versus sugar and fruit juice. And that's called the sugar load, or the glycemic index, that how much sugar is entering the liver per minute. And many people thought diabetes is pancreatic disease. Diabetes is liver disease. Diabetes, except juvenile diabetes, that's a pancreatic disease because the beta cells did not grow. But most of the diabetes is adult onset, diabetes type 2. That diabetes is related to what you eat, what you inherited from your parents also. So they ate lots of sugar. They ate lots of uh, uh, juices. They ate lots of maple syrup, lots of pancakes. So when you were born, you had a DNA damage. You had mutation. The, the, there is a gene, I was looking through my papers here and, uh, and it's probably disappeared. I put it some places that I can find it. Uh, anyway, there is a gene in, uh, inside our body that controls the nutrition of the body. And if you just be uh, patient a little bit, maybe I will find it because I didn't think I'm going to use it for the lecture tonight, but. Uh, I felt like I should use it. I found it right here. There is actually a gene uh, that regulates the nutrition of the, of the cell. So when we talked the last time on Vivix, here we are talking more, much more depth on the DNA that that gene called the nutrition gene right here, when it gets damaged, it will give you lots of disease. So if that gene uh, is a good gene, then we're going to have beneficial outcome. The, the offspring is going to be better. If it is a bad gene, we have a problem with the, with the offspring. Are you following me or not? Uh, what I'm trying to tell you tonight, like I always have done for the last 30 years, that we can reverse problems. We can reverse problems, not because you have depression, you're always going to have depression. Not because you have an anxiety, you're always going to have anxiety. Not because you have insomnia, not because you have your parents have cancer, you're going to have cancer. We can reverse things. Are you following me or not? So the, the fact that we could prove that to, the, to our patients last time we were here in the lecture on Bivix, and I told you that the biflavonoids can reverse the DNA uh, mutation, here we are showing the gene itself. So by having the good gene, you will have lower cholesterol, you have lower sugar, you have lower blood pressure, you have lower cancer, you have lower heart problems. By having the mutated gene, you will have increased lipids, increased glucose, increased insulin resistance, increased blood pressure, increased cancer, increase heart problems. So that explains to you why you have some body of your friends who they're, uh, they're, they're skinny, they, they're not fat, but they have high cholesterol and they have heart disease. You heard of that, right? And the reason behind that is the gene is being mutated. Okay. We'll go back to this, uh, this picture right here. So by, by, having, by having more sugar to add to all this, uh, the wrong protein, the wrong carbohydrate, the wrong fat, the wrong diet, 
plus deficiency of vitamin E, deficiency of vitamin C, deficiency of trace minerals, zinc, manganese, magnesium, potassium, you name it like this. When you have some high or some low, you have double problems here. Plus, you have the environmental issues we talked about that will lead to the diseases of what we were talking about, which is depression, anxiety, insomnia, mood problems. We did not have much research in that field, how nutrition is going to work, until we start understanding the hormones of the, of the, of the body. We find out that the hormones of the body, that women hormone, control lots of, what is a hormone? What is the definition of a hormone versus enzyme versus uh, vitamin, you know? A, a hormone is a substance that gives you the quality of your life. So hormone was designed only to make you feel good. That's a hormone. Uh, those hormones go down with age. When they go down with age, they cause problems. So uh, we, I am right now attacking the problem already directly because I was thinking, uh, I sat for almost three hours today trying to prepare the lecture. Then I can finally came to a page one right there. That's why I'm going to stick with this few things because the idea of the lecture, you come home, you go home with some idea what to tell people or what to do for yourself. So the hormones are inside the body, in the brain. There are, there is the pituitary gland. Everybody heard about that, correct? And in the neck, we have the thyroid gland. And in the back of it, we have the parathyroid gland. So we made it, we made it dirty right here. Let's clean that thing. Well, so we need water to clean it, right? Basic edge or anything. Okay. Well, we're just gonna have it and just clean it all night unless we have something. Anyway, the uh, this uh, this glands right here, they make hormones, pituitary gland and thyroid gland. We have also the adrenal gland, and we have also two glands, and two glands, not in the same person. These are the ovaries, and this is the testicles in men. So these are all the glands we secrete hormone. And what is a hormone again? Hormone is a substance that is responded to you. You, you tell your body, I need to wake up, you're awake. I need to go to sleep, you go to sleep. I need to laugh, then you laugh. I need to be serious, you said. This, they control your emotion all day because you are the one who controlling it, not the hormones control it. Your body, your liver, your heart, your, your brain itself, tissue, control all the moods through, during the day. Because the creator of that body did that to us from the very beginning, and it works fine. The pituitary gland secretes many hormones. Those hormones come out of the pituitary gland. They do stimulate the body to function. There is a uh, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenal stimulating hormone, parathyroid stimulating hormone, or polycal FSH stimulating hormone. There is many hormones come out of the brain to stimulate these hormones right here. The thyroid hormone will come out and will give you what it's supposed to give. What what does the thyroid hormone does? We have. Uh, used the picture in the very beginning uh, when we started of 
of this lady right here that have low thyroid. Just having a low thyroid, what does she have? You, I can read it for you if you can read it from there. She will have more fatigue, more forgetfulness, slower thinking, and anxiety, depression, inability to concentrate, hair loss, anemia, dry skin, brittle nails, cold intolerance, elevated cholesterol, and swelling on the eyelids, and uh, hoarseness, and other symptoms. Weight gain and all of that. Does this sound familiar to all of, all of us? Lots of people we know have these symptoms. And you see the same symptoms in depression, and you see it in anxiety, and you see it in Alzheimer, and you see it in dementia. So as the organ who's responsible here for it is doing something wrong, which is the brain. So this, uh, this hormone right here, deficiency or problems, can lead to all the symptoms we're going to talk about today. The other glands right here is the adrenal gland. What does the adrenal gland do? Adrenal gland secretes adrenaline. That was a difficult one. <laughs> and also, adrenal gland secretes other hormones such as DHEA. And, and, and also secretes some estrogen some progesterone and testosterone, and also secretes cortisol, cort steroids. What are these things do? <coughs> what are, you know, that's a lot of hormones here. We talked about the thyroid, that's all of that. So what did the DHA do? Well, the DHA was not discovered until 1996. It was discovered accidentally in 1996 by when they were doing study on animals. They find out there are some animals who are living in certain area of the, of the farm are healthier than others. So they measured the hormone. It turned out to be the hormone DHEA. This research, by the way, this research was not discovered in 1996 was published in 1996, but was discovered in the 70s. And drug companies, they get hold of all the new discoveries. And they try to make a drug that, so they can sell to the people. So they hold on it for 20 years, and they release it to us. They could not find a drug to increase the DHA. What does the DHA do? It prevents depression. And one of the, I, I do have class, for instance, about DHA later on. I just want to cover these things in case if we don't have time in the end. The DHA, it does, it works better than Paxil and Prozac control depression. Because during depression, the amount of serotonin secreted in the brain, and acetylcholine, and dopamine, and adrenaline, and all this hormone go down. There is, there is a the tremendous lack of that from the brain itself. So the adrenal gland comes and makes up for what the brain misses. So we have a double control system in the body. If the brain doesn't do its job, then the other glands will do their job. You got the point now? So we're not depending on a stroke. We, have, we could have a stroke, but still the body can function. You could have, uh, you could have a, a tumor in the brain, and the, the body still can function. So we have double control. The DHA, it, it does 
prevent depression. And this is a study in the University of San Francisco, University of Cambridge have proven that. Another thing we notice about DHA does, it does prevent brain aging. So it, it prevents brain aging. The article that says, which I have the original papers here uh, published, that it prevents brain aging. By preventing aging of the brain, this means that hormone is important. So what they have done, they noticed that everybody after the age of 40, their DHA level start going down. Same thing with the thyroid, by the way. And the thyroid do not depend on the thyroid blood test. Many times it's wrong because the ratio is so big for TSH from 0 0.1 to 5.6, no, you could be miserable during that time and you could be low thyroid. But in the meantime, if you fall within the range of the lab, this means you're normal. So in my patient, what I do, I give them the natural thyroid anyway and see how they feel. And I repeat the blood test before I give them thyroid and after I give them thyroid and the TSH did not change. Even I was given 60 grains of thyroid, natural thyroid, still didn't change the blood test. That means blood test is incorrect. So when we, we check the DHA level, supposed to be 1,000 for men and 900 for women, uh, we found out that most of the patient after the age of 40, the DHA dives like this. Every single human being living in a stressful environment. And some patients that are 50, they, they go down to 100. At 60, they go down to 50. At 70, they go down to 25. And the normal is 1,000. And just to show you the miracles of God on this earth, this drug company spent 20 years, probably billions of dollars, to try to find that drug. It took only a few chemists to find out with my degree, agronomy degree, before medicine, to find out that sunflower seed oil have plenty of that. And you need to eat the whole bushel every day so you can get the DHA you want. So what they have done, they extracted it. Natural, it was extracted. And it became so expensive that it costs you only $5 a month to get back to normal. You follow me? So $5 a month, guaranteed 100% that each is gonna come back, and you will feel the results, and you can see it in the blood work, and you got the benefits, no depression, better memory, uh, better, it works against skin cancer, and it's extremely powerful for the immune system. Uh, it, it increases insulin growth factor one. That is the hormone from the liver that keeps you young. It increases the, the killer cells by 60% when you, when you take it. Uh, before you take it, you, uh, you have a tendency to catch colds, or you have a tendency to have allergies. Your, your immune system is low, or have cancer. After you take it, and we do the blood test, and within a week, you go back to normal. Within a week, it goes from 100 or 50 to 1,000. And that is very good, especially from something very inexpensive. And it doesn't need sophisticated manufacturing like even Vivix. So that was wonderful when we noticed that the DHA increases killer cells by 60% increase the monocells by 40%, increase nutrafuran by 50% for MS patients and those people uh, with hepatitis C, all of that. This is one hormone that does all of that. Are you following me? So let us assume you are the doctor and the patient. I come to you and I tell you, uh, my age is 50 and I'm depressed. I am acting depressed because I had all the symptoms 
right here. What are the symptoms of depression? It's the same symptoms of, of Alzheimer. It's the same symptoms of uh, an anxiety. We talked about it right here. Uh, same symptoms. Because the body functions the same way. So what would you do for me, the first thing, if you feel that I might have depression? What's a good thing if you are a good doctor? You do a blood test, right? You would do a blood test. You would check my thyroid, right? You would also check my DHA level, correct? Does it make sense or not? And then you start, you also check my my uh, estrogen level, testosterone, progesterone level, testosterone level, and men and women both have the same hormones. The amount varies, but they have the same. And you check also that maybe I do have Addison disease. Have you ever heard about Addison disease? Maybe my adrenal is shot. Maybe I have adrenal exhaustion from the stress I had in my life. You follow me or not? So don't assume as a doctor that the patient who come in need a pill to go to sleep or a pill to come down or a pill to laugh. You can do that temporarily, that's true. But in the long run, you have to get to the root of the problem and find out the hormone. That is the DHEA. And they given the DHEA to aged mice in research. They, give, they had mice, young, they gave it lots of chemicals, they became so old, then they injected DHEA and they became young again. So it's almost at works with Vivex. So if it, because I was driving here and it says in the, in the paper that DHEA will lower your age by 25 years. I said, wow, if you get 25 years from Vivex and 25 from, uh, from DHA, then you got zero. <laughs> You're 50. <laughs> so in any case, every year there is something being discovered that we can cure incurable diseases. Number one was the Vivex, that we can correct mutation. Number two, the DHA, that does not correct mutation, but give you quality of life. So it is important to understand that also there are other, other hormones that could be deficient. The estrogen, what does it do to the body? We, to understand that is to go to the, uh, uh, go to the articles I have right here, and it's so important for me to find that article and share it with you because it's a, it's a wonderful research was done. Oh, I, I found the, the DHA while I was going through anyway. Uh, the, this is the DHA article right here, so you have it on the screen. It says in the, in the Journal of Drugs and Aging, October 1996, an analysis of previous study of DHA showed that in both human and animals, a decline of DHA production with aging is associated with immune depression, increased risk of several uh, different cancers, loss of sleep, decreased feeling of well-being, increased mortality, and DHA replacement in aged mice significantly improved the immune function to youthful state. And number three, DHA replacement has made the bones very strong. And low level of DHA will cause heart disease and diabetes. And studies in humans shows no toxicity of it at all on any dose. You know, of course, if you're a woman, you don't take 100 milligrams. Uh, you take lower doses according to your blood level. Because if you take too much, you will have more male hormones. Uh, uh, so in any way, that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> Go back to, to the other hormone. Yeah, the estrogen, you're right. OK. 
Okay, it's not the outcome I want. I'm just giving you something to get busy with until I find it. <laughs> Give you something so you can keep looking until I find my article. Here I found it. This the, the main article right here. All right, I wanted to uh, give you the main article that what does, can you give me some water from the back? I wanted to wipe this thing right here. I can use my saliva if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, you have some? Okay. I got some water right there, thank you. <laughs> okay, so what does what the, what does the estrogen hormone do? Uh, these are the things that it does. This is a study was done on two hundred and six thousand women, the largest in the world, and it was done. After Dr. Johnson himself was a female doctor in London, she, did, she came out with the theory that PMS exists about 40 years, 35 years ago. And then, uh, and then the lack of progesterone is the one that causes problems. It was not people going crazy, it was lack of progesterone. So she did it herself. But in the meantime, many other doctors started doing research, and here it is. That lack of estrogen, you can see that it will cause a um, uh, mood problem uh, and uh, uh, depression, and it can cause Alzheimer, it can cause macular degeneration, it can cause uh, vasomotor problem that you're hot and cold and you don't feel good. It can cause heart disease, it can cause colon disease, colon cancer, it can cause urine problems and bone problems. So one hormone here affects the brain right there that can cause depression also, just like the other hormones we talked about. Are you following me or not? Okay, so this means if we replace that, if we do the blood test and replace it with was natural one equal to what you need, then you're going to benefit with that even if you had breast cancer. Because natural estrogen do not cause breast cancer. A synthetic estrogen is called breast cancer. Synthetic estrogen for herbicide and pesticide and the hormones they give to animals, it mimics our estrogen and it goes and causes the cancer. So let, 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 let us not give bad reputation to soy protein that it can cause breast cancer and, uh, and all these rumors that has absolutely no scientific basis to it. This, are, this is the real research right here. When somebody says a soy protein is bad for you because it can cause, I said, show me the research. I'm showing you 206,000 people in one research. So you've got to show scientific uh, things, otherwise you're just making up stuff, stuff and scaring people. So the lack of estrogen hormone here is also can lead to the anxiety and the depression and all that, plus many other bodily problems that is uh, the back will start to go curving like this and the arteries start clogging and many other things, and many other problems. So, so let me find my paper. So, the, uh, so that hormone also can lead to these problems. Progesterone, what does it do inside the body? What is the function of progesterone? 
Let me go to the medical box. Medical book says it has no function. When I study in medicine, it says in my textbook in embryology that children were born with lots of uh, with vitamins in their body and omega-3 and uh, vitamin C and vitamin E and progesterone. It has no function, just happened to be there. But now we discover that progesterone is mood hormone that makes you feel good, men or women. And I do remember one incident when two children came to my office, both going, uh, the girl, uh, brother and sister, the girl was going to psychiatrist, she'd been in mental hospital, and she's 16, and she is going to uh, kill herself. Her mother said, I want to send her to Dr. Nasser, and she's taking lots of drugs. Then I say to her mother, maybe she had lack of progesterone. So we checked. She was. She had no progesterone. So what we did, we gave her progesterone. Because progesterone has no side effects. You can take tons of it. You feel good. Men or women, it doesn't matter. I gave it to her. I, haven't, I didn't hear from her for about 10 years. I don't know what happened to her, if she's in a mental hospital or what happened, until I get a call that she is an attorney in San Francisco and she completely cured from the first progesterone I gave it to her and she intended to call me to thank me for 10 years. But she forgot. <laughs> but that made me feel good. That I know I did something right to somebody. That she, rather than she's in a mental hospital, she went ahead and did what I did. She felt good. She rejected the drugs. She went with her career, and then she became an attorney, and then she got married. She had children, and she realized, oh, oops, you know, I'd better call that doctor who helped me, which is that's okay. <laughs> so we do use progesterone for mood. So if somebody has an anxiety or depression or insomnia, we have to be sure the hormones are correct at first, before we give any drugs. Testosterone, what does it do inside the body? Testosterone, it, it builds muscles. For men, it builds muscles for women. But there's something more than that testosterone does. Testosterone controls the pituitary gland up here. Testosterone makes the person think clearly. And people with testosterone don't have depression. As a matter of fact, too much testosterone can cause aggression. You follow me? So God has created certain amount for men, which is approximately 950 reading, and women approximately 60 to 70. And when we, when we maintain them that way, men and women, we have no problem. And then we also find testosterone to be very deficient. And the latest of the hormones, the, the adrenal hormone, uh, the cortisol, the cortisol is the one give you energy all day. And when you wake up in the morning, at 4 o'clock in the morning, this gland right here, she gets a wake-up call from the brain. Said that person's going to wake up. It has telephones right here, one after the other. It sends all these phone calls all over the body and tell the body, make hormones. One of them will be cortisol. And cortisol will rise in the morning and peaks at noon and goes down at 5 p.m. By 5 p.m., you're young. That is the hormone make you yawn at 5 p.m. If you work at night and sleep in the daytime, 
your body is completely screwed up. <laughs> you have no idea. And I did work in graveyard shifts as a doctor, and I have, I have no idea how I made it through the night. Because you are walking sleep and you do surgeries and you treat the people and you you open your eyes with your hand and it's not normal. <laughs> Let us have everybody sleep after six p.m. Yeah. Yeah. and then we have no noise. There's no graveyard shift. You know, everything can wait. Yeah. You follow me or not? Yeah. You want to have health to society? Yeah. Pay people double for the daytime. They don't have to work 46 hours, they work 20 hours, 25 hours, get double, and everybody have a job. <laughs> After all, we are rich country. But somebody stole our money. <laughs> so, it wasn't me or you, but somebody else okay, stole the money. It's really sad because, because this is the greatest country in the world, and this is a country I selected to migrate to, and I worked so hard to help it, even I know Reagan, I know Bush, I know uh, Barbara Bush, I know Democrats, Republicans, because I, I, I have awards, Physician of the Year twice, and then I went to Washington to meet all the people. And then I always look at them as great people. And then I take my daughter, Sarah, with me, and I take my nephew just to see how great the government is. And, and I made proud of it and all that. And here we are, in the we're walking in the Supreme Court area, they showed us the Supreme Court area, and one senator pinching the wife of another senator and her butt when you walking around in front of my daughter. <laughs> and this is conservative. <laughs> and many liberal ones will do that. So what happened here? We were, I had to explain to her, this are we all human. We all make mistakes, but we have to accept and forgive people, and people, some sick, and oh, all God, she didn't believe anything I said. She said that, she said that, I'm 32, you know. <laughs> I know, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I know these people. <laughs> but anyway, I tried. Uh, I still have lots of faith that this country is gonna come back and be the best in the world with the effort of every, every one of you, and then in the effort to also do not vote for somebody because you hate them and you hate the others. The, don't use your heart, use your brain when making decisions. Follow me? So woman, if she's the best, vote for that woman because she's the best. If a man is the best, vote for the best. But to hear this stuff, garbage stuff in America, we are above all of that stuff. We are above all of that. There's no place whatsoever to demean any human being. Because when you demean somebody, you're demeaning yourself. You follow me? When you call in somebody a name, you're demeaning yourself. You are the one bringing yourself down. Why? You are the best in the world. You are human. God made you the best of the best. Why you want to demean your brother? It doesn't matter what race or color or what, what money, you know? It doesn't. What does it take to smile? Three muscles. What does it take to frown? 200, right? Or something like that? So in any way, we'll go back to the lecture. <laughs> so, now we have talked about that the hormones have a role, and for somebody to, uh, for somebody to stay healthy and don't have any uh, depression, they must correct their hormones. So if we think about what causes, what causes the problem with depression and anxiety, insomnia, it is imbalance in the metabolism inside the body. Imbalance of some kind, called a chemical imbalance. And, uh, and if you, as a doctor, cannot know it, you don't know it, then you have to work with another doctor who knows it. Because if we don't correct the root of these problems, we never succeed. So number one problem, uh, we said it could be hormonal. Remember, we talked about that. Number two problem, it could be 
uh, it could be toxicity. That the person was exposed to aluminum or mercury all his life and start acting on the brain or drink lots of alcohol or take cocaine or do some drugs or something to damage the brain toxicity. So we have to also detoxify the person. Number three, it could be circulation, right? We have, I, I'm making my own study right now to understand Alzheimer's and Parkinson both. And I have found, I haven't published it, I have found there is a correlation with heart problems to strokes and Parkinson and Alzheimer's. That some people will have atrial fibrillation during the day without knowing it. And during the time they have fibrillation, the heart is fibrillating, it shoots clots, showers of blood to the brain. You follow me or not? Not enough to make you walk funny, but is enough to bother the brain over five years, 10 years, then you start seeing deterioration. Every single one I saw so far with dementia, Alzheimer, and Parkinson, they have episodes of fibrillation. For that reason, we have decided that every patient will, have, will wear a halter monitor, and every patient will have a stress test, and whenever we see fibrillation, we'll counter it right now with, with something. We will do something to correct the heart. So circulation to the brain can be also the, the carotid heel is clogged. That also we can improve on it. Number four is you could have infection in the brain. We know that Lyme disease can affect the brain and can cause symptoms similar to depression and anxiety. We know that chronic fatigue syndrome, which Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegaly virus, uh, Coxsackie virus, uh, and, and all these herpes 1 virus, herpes 2, shingles virus even, go to the brain. Even if you have it here, still go to the brain. And those viruses, they must be killed or must be controlled by the immune system. So a doctor must do a blood test. The, the thing is, for people who are depressed and anxiety, and regardless if they are young or old and have insurance, all insurances will recognize all of this and pay for it. And Medicare is the best of all. It always covers all the tests for prevention. Always does. And I hope that whoever gets elected does not play around with Social Security and Medicare because we want to keep it safe like that. We don't want somebody else to take the money and play with it on the side. So these are the causes of anxiety, depression, insomnia, and all of this. But there is another problem, number five, is called metabolic problem. Metabolic means your metabolism. You could have hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. You could have hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. You could have high cholesterol. Uh, by the way, I want to I wanna take a moment right here about the cholesterol because this is on DVD. This means anybody in uh, drug companies or medical society want to challenge me, they can. There is no benefit for giving cholesterol drugs over omega-3. That omega-3 is better than all the cholesterol drugs in the market. And it's scientific proven. As a matter of fact, one company now, a pharmaceutical, Pfizer, they start making omega-3 in capsules instead of Zucor. You follow me? 
Because, I'm saying that because the side effect of statin drugs, dissolved muscles, dissolve the heart, give you aches and pains and all of that, there's, you can counter it by taking CoQ10. You can counter some of the side effects of CoQ10. You can do that, taking about 10 CoQ10 with it, with Zucor. But the symptoms will go away. By, by why? Why don't you give a chance to 6 grams or 8 grams of omega-3 and 6 to 8 grams. Uh, the recommended dose in the medical book says 1 gram. But from my experimentation, 4 grams was, but I, if somebody taking Vivix and not everything else, then 4 grams is enough. But if they're not, they need to take more. The, it, so it could be low, low blood sugar or high blood sugar. In a case like that, glucose regulation that Shackley have would be helpful for that. Are you following me? Here we are coming to the nutrition part, how to introduce it to the system. We talked about the basic foundation, what caused problem. Now we are talking about the treatment of it naturally. Another metabolic problem is homocysteine. Homocysteine is a toxic amino acid found in everyone lives in North America and Europe. And this toxic amino acid, it was not present before. And there is correlation 100% between homocysteine and cholesterol, and homocysteine and dementia, and homocysteine and heart attacks and strokes. And homocysteine also can cause cancer. It's a blood test. So the doctor has to do homocysteine blood level. If it is over five, then you have to think about it, what you're going to do about it. Have you ever heard about homocysteine in here, anybody? Somebody did, in the back, thank you. So, homocysteine actually was also discovered that if we lower the homocysteine, we lower heart attacks, we lower cholesterol, we lower uh, Alzheimer, we lower cancer, we lower dementia, and that was discovered also in the 70s. It was only published to us 1994. After they failed to make a drug to lower homocysteine. And I got the papers here to, to show it. I got everything here. After that, they, they failed, then they let us have it. So what we had done, what I've done as a scientist, we worked all together around the world. We found out that when we combine TMG, which is an, uh, uh, it's a product from a tree from India, plus B complex, plus vitamin E, it will lower the homocysteine. And there is no drug will do it, but this will do it. We, we TMG, trimethylglycine, a TMG, we call the process methylation, which means B deficiency. We found that the patients have B complex deficiency, B6 and B1 and B3 and folic acid. And what we have done, because they, they are taking their vitamins, but they have deficiency, so we have figured they might have malabsorption. Maybe they're not absorbent. So we went ahead and gave it to them intravenously or by injection, and sure enough, the, the problem they had the year before of clogged arteries in the heart, the next year after that, it got unclogged. And no surgery done. So the company were looking for a drug like statin to, to sell. They didn't. Then we have the methylation treatment that we do intravenously for those patients, and we also give them TMG orally. 
for that. And the homeless scene, because the lack of time, I have tons of papers here to talk about homeless scene, what else does it do? Because, because these are studies, are scientific studies, and the, the non-study, for example, the non-study that was uh, involved, 40,000 nuns were involved in that, that has shown that the one would have high homocysteine, they all develop dementia, uh, heart attacks, and cancer. And when they receive the treatment, they all get better. Again, no drugs. What do you think? So we have covered all the causes for these problems. So what else we can do to improve that, that person, the mood of that person. Uh, we will divide it to four sections. First of all, genetically, that person could be crazy from their mom or their dad. Maybe they born with it. But we're not going to worry about that. Why? Because we talked about Vivix last time. And we said, by flavonoid, we're repaired. So there is no reason to blame anybody except yourself. You understand? Stress, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and anxiety and depression and insomnia is internal problem, not external problem. It is not caused by the stress outside alone. The stress outside contributes to 10%, 90% inside the body. You follow me, right? You can take two people, expose them to the same problem, one will scream and one is calm. One will have a nervous breakdown and one doesn't. One will commit suicide and the other doesn't. You follow me? So we must understand there is a weakness in the person. Like let's say somebody lost their kid or their mom, or their dad. We all cry, that's okay. But if we cry for 10 years, that's not normal. You follow me or not? Yeah. That is something wrong. Because we have the, the, the parietal lobe of the brain here that puts back memory yesterday, memory for yesterday. And next day over it, and next day over it, and next day over it, and very soon, you still love your mom and, the, and your son, whatever, but you don't cry all the time because you know they are in a better place, they're gone and okay, and you move forward. But to have a nervous breakdown over it, that's not normal. So this is called aggravating factors, stress. So if you think that you're going to blame your problems, for insomnia and your husband snoring, uh, or, you uh, or your depression, that he call you bad names, or your anxiety, he doesn't pay enough money. No, the problem is yours, not his. The vice versa, the same thing. The husband who think, yeah, my problem is my wife, you know this and this. No, the problem is you. You have a hormonal problem, circulation problem, toxicity problem, homocysteine problem, you better correct it. But if you don't correct it, you're gonna have a stroke, you're gonna suffer, you're gonna have Alzheimer, and after all, she will bury you and marry somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so it is important for every one of you to know that the most important person in your life to you is you. Nobody is number two. You are number one, and everybody else is number two. So the genetic part is gone. We can give Vivix for that. We talked about it last time. Then we come to the nutrition part. What nutrients it give you good mood all day? Is eating fruits or carbohydrates, whole wheat carbohydrates. Several meals of that. Or energizing soy protein, several times a day. 
what, what does this do? These three things here, what do they do? They maintain the blood sugar with the glucose regulation. And definitely, somebody with low blood sugar would be depressed. Number two, that's include the protein. Number two, you consume the essential fatty acids from olive oil or from good sources like that in the salad rather than use uh, things that is not good for you. Number three, vitamins and vitalizer, by the way, is considered a complete supplement for somebody who have depression or an anxiety or insomnia. But don't call me and say, I've been taking the fruits and I've been taking the vitalizer, I've been using olive oil, I still can sleep. Well, there may be other problems. You know, we talked about other things. But at least you should start someplace. And that, the, also the minerals in the vitalizer. Water also, it's, it's very important. And the, uh, the other factor right here is controlling stress. All insomnia and depression and anxiety, they all don't need stress. They all need a period of time for relaxation or rejuvenation that they can laugh and they can have a good time. You follow me or not? This is why sometimes somebody who's depressed can cry. What happened during crying? Dopamine goes up, adrenaline goes up, serotonin goes up during, during crying. So the person feels better. But for how long? Maybe four hours. But goes back again, the cycle down again. So you have to have a crying machine all the time, and you will run out of tears. So cry is OK, but you cry after you, you if, it's, if it's emergency, of course you, everybody should cry. But, but we should be strong enough that we can face stress outside without crying. We cannot keep watching. Uh, bad news and, and TV and cry about it. We have to do something about it. So I wanted to tell you this. Stress is self-induced. You have to be positive in your thinking. Positive in your thinking means if you can walk, and if you can see, and if you can hear, and you can think, then you are alive, then you're lucky then there is no reason to complain. You follow me? You take yourself as depressed, as stressed, as anxiety and all of that, put yourself in place somebody else who have been paralyzed, who has been traumatized, who is in the nursing home, which one you're gonna be? You have to be positive, and when you wake up in the morning and you say, God, thank you for another birthday. Because every day is a birthday. What's your birthday? It's tomorrow morning. You might see it, you might not see it. But if it comes, you're happy. But if it comes when you cannot move, then you're not very happy if you have a stroke. OK. Positive means also that you change the environment around you to positive. You, you know how many times going through a medical school and and I was I'm from Egypt. In certain hospital, they do not like foreigners, even from Egypt. Even we, we have the pyramids, and we, uh, uh, even your ancestors came from Egypt. You know, and that's Egypt, it's some mother of civilization. They still say, hey, come on, Jackie, come here. <laughs> that's, I didn't even think, know what it means, anyway. <laughs> but I'm glad he's lucky I didn't know. But in any way, I, I, after I knew it didn't bother me, I said, he's just a pity guy, you know, he, he's nothing. And he was my professor. <laughs> and I told him, I, I think he's just done nothing, you know, in a nice way. 
Because he said, I never gonna give you A. Everybody give you A. Everybody never give you A. Well, he gave me a C. But everybody else got C and D. So, so anyway, be positive. Somebody call you on the phone, want to talk about a problem, and it doesn't sound happy, said, so what can I do to you about it? Nothing, don't talk to me about it. Uh, if I can do something, I come and give you a ride, that's fine. But if you're talking about your kids, this and this and this, what's, uh, what people do, they transfer their negativity to other people. And if they not negative and crying with them and do with them, then they don't care. You follow me? So the, the person talks to the other person, I'm talking to you all, all that you're not listening. You know, I'm talking to you about the problems and, and, the, and the guy is watching TV and doing that. And says, you're not listening because he doesn't want anything negative. And he, if you're talking about something in his job and she's cooking and said, oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, you don't care. You don't know. No, she cares, but she doesn't want to be negative. You follow me? She had her problem already for all day, but other problems, the kids and flies and school and all that, why are you going to add to it? So when you enter home, that's your peace place. That's the place you rest, you laugh, and you sleep. And actually, I read something right here. I hope I find that one. <laughs> because I, I, I thought it was funny. I got this from my medical book, by the way. I was reading my medical book about depression, and I came across this comment, and I said, I got to take that and read it for them. <laughs> Okay. Okay, this was about insomnia. Actually, it was not about depression. That was insomnia right here, chapter insomnia. It says, uh, it says, exercise regularly, uh, don't eat a big meal before you go to sleep, avoid alcohol, use your bedroom only for sex and sleep. <laughs> So now you've got some ideas. So I thought this is very interesting because it is important to, if you've got the hormone, to use it. But if you don't have the hormone, you better run away. <laughs> so another thing uh, it help with stress is exercise. It doesn't matter how much sleep, depressed you are, and anxiety, uh, or you uh, insomnia, exercise will make you tired physically, that will give you lots of adrenaline and you will sleep like a lot because you're tired. You follow me or not? Keep the room cool, not cold. The temperature of the room should be around 65 to 68 and the bed itself should be warm even if you have to use electric blanket or several blankets. You have to have a warm body and cold face. You understand? Because warm face, you get suffocated. You feel like you can't sleep. You toss and turn and itch and you sweat and you don't feel good. So stress control also by praying. Praying also helps stress. And then, does praying help somebody who's depressed? Would prayer help somebody who is insomniac? Would somebody help somebody who is have an anxiety praying? Yeah, it does. But it's not going to do it if the hormones are not are bad. But it will help to have good hormones and also pray. And and there was a there was a a research was done at Mayo Clinic. That they brought in several religions: Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindus, Buddhist and they were both atheists also. Okay, all. And they, they, they have IV to measure their immune system attached to them, and the brain also, waves. And they asked him to think about a big problem. They gave him a big problem how to solve it. And all the people who had beliefs, they went up 
the, the neutral interferon went up, and the one who's atheist went down. <coughs> because he doesn't know what to say. So prayers is faith. Means you believe somebody up there, bigger than you, can help you. And the baby to the mom, the baby looks at the mother. It doesn't matter if you tell your baby, God, 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 all day. No. You are God to that baby. And when you abuse that baby, it would be very hurt, but still love you. Because you control his food and everything. You follow me? And another thing we want to talk about control. Control is a, it's a desire for human race to control each other. Please do not control anybody else. The humble person are the best person. But the person who likes to come home to shout and then beat everybody and, try and hold the money and do that because he's a macho, actually, that's not going to help in the situation. It is always better to be a servant than to be served. It's always important that you, if you see your partner sleep, you go and make a cup of coffee, get some glass of water, do something for them, uh, uh, or both breakfast before you go to work. Because I see things like this. I see kids tell their mom, go and get me food. That's not good, I need another food. I see husband do the same way. Because the father does it, the son does it. Mom, I don't like your food, give me another one. And the father walks in, the same order. And I'm sitting listening to all of that. And then I said, wait a minute. Let's all talk, because I know these people. Who gave you the authority and power to order her? I said, oh, it's supposed to be women serve men. I said, no, they both serve God. They're both equal. They said, well, God created women for a man rib. I said, no, we have the same number of ribs. Whoever put that rib situation there was drunk. Okay. But men, women is equal to men 100%. I got two daughters. If I don't raise them in society strong like this, they'd be abused and they'd be lost. And they have, I have three granddaughters. And I got to put the confidence in them that you're gonna be the best, you're gonna be the best. Uh, and they are, even the girls, sometimes they slack because emotional, the progesterone goes down, my granddaughter did, and her grade went from A down to, to C, and she was shocked because she's an A student. I told her mom, this is progesterone. We measured the person, it was low, gave her progesterone, she went A again. So in, 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 in controlling stress, you have to work at it. The last thing I want to talk about is toxicity. Lots of people have chemicals in their brain. Have you ever, have this in your life that you smell something good, you feel good. You smell jasmine, you smell perfume, you smell something aromatic, you feel good. Then you walk, you, you smell asphalt being laid in the highway, the fumes, and you don't feel as good, right? Sometimes even you have headache, right? So the chemical, the body does not like chemicals, period. And we have lots of chemicals in our air and water and food at work. There is so many workers work in machinery that I find mercury in it, aluminum, a, a, a huge amount. And then what we do, we do chelation, remove the chemicals from their body, and they are a new person. So toxicity also can be removed by taking enough antioxidants like vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin D, and all those vitamins. Anyway, there was something else I was going to talk about, but I think uh, it's, it's 8 30 already. It's not important. And then I guess. Well, I better stop right now and tell you uh, that the summary of the lecture that number one, you need a diagnosis. Number two, you need to work on 
the nutrition part of your life, the stress part, and the exercise, and the toxicity part, and then within eight months or six, eight months, you get a new person. Even if you are not perfect, and you have advanced dementia, Alzheimer, you will not get worse, you might get even a little bit better. So the brain has the ability to rejuvenate itself, and that will bring me to the, actually, to the one on estrogen that I was looking for, that I forgot to talk about it. So I have to bring it back. This article right here, I'm supposed to finish the lecture, but this is the article I wanted to discuss. This, uh, this article right here, it says how the brain keeps itself fit. And they have, it's a picture, so they have a person right here. Okay, they have a person right here, this is a doctor. And the patient right here, they're talking to each other. And the doctor wrote the article. And this was, uh, the article says that, uh, that this woman had Alzheimer. And the doctor here in the University of Southern California, Victor Hernandez, in, in Southern California, University of Southern California, he believed it could be related to hormonal imbalance, the Alzheimer. So what he had done, he had given her the hormones right here on the bottom of the page, estrogen and progesterone and testosterone. And it would have been a lot better even if he gave the other hormone, DHA and other things. And then she died in a car accident, uh, two years later when he under treatment. And she advanced Alzheimer's. She crossed the street, was hit by a bus. So they did autopsy. They found that right here, the nerve is dying. I don't know if you can see that from your seat or not, but if you can't, believe me, there's a dead nerve someplace here. <laughs> but right here, right here, the two nerves took place of it. You see that or you don't see that? Yeah. So her brain was rejuvenating itself or rebuilding itself again. So this is really giving you lots of hope with, with brain problem, with, uh, with, with any kind of problem related to the brain. And uh, you have to, of course, start someplace. And then nutrition is a good place to start. And then after that, if you, if you, have, if, if you wish to have the, the, uh, the time, you want me to check the hormones for you, I give you my phone number. 847-571-3914. And the office number is 356-9009. Okay, this, the, the, the top number is cell number, this is the office number, and this number is also, if you have, the cell number, if you have a personal question tonight, and you didn't want to talk in front of everybody, then you can call me in private and talk about the anxiety, the depression, the insomnia, the problems, and everything you talk about, no charge and, co and confidential. I will not discuss it with anybody. I will take some questions from front to the back, but thank you so much uh, to all of you. And uh, if you have to leave, you can, but if you want to stay, uh, I will take some questions. I will take some private questions in the front right here, and the some cards right here of mine, if you want to pick up some. Yes, sir? You mentioned about the natural soy over synthetic. How do you chemically tell the difference? Like uh, natural estrogen, you mean, over synthetic. How do you tell the synthetic from the natural? Like D-alpha, D-L-alpha? Uh, no. Uh, we basically have to go back and see how they manufacture it. Because uh, you're right. It, it, it's a DL or the D the or L or DL. It, it, it has to be, but it might not be. Maybe maybe they added sulfur or nitrogen to it so they can patent it. So apparently you are you you, you know some biochemistry 
So you take everything libo or dextro or they did no. Everything in nature, as you know, if you know that, is libo. Dextro is not normal. Okay. However, they can't make libo and stabilize it, but they can pass in dextro, and they also can add to it nitrogen or sulfur, cyanide, or or anything. They can add another atom. So it's pathogenable, like a primrin. It's a horse urine. So they don't even have to live there. You say soy protein and leave it at that? No, I'm not talking about soy protein. I'm talking about the estrogen. Okay. Soy protein, there is no, we, there's all natural. There's no synthetic soy protein. Okay, we were talking about the natural estrogen does not cause, natural estrogen does not cause cancer. Natural testosterone does not cause cancer. Because you have tons of testosterone when you were teenager, you did not have cancer. The women had tons of it when they were teenager estrogen, they did not have cancer. So why did they have cancer at 50? Uh, we have to, scientists, we have to think through things, not to be sheep and follow somebody else. And that's the difference between an investigator, a scientist, and a somebody who just reads the National Enquirer, you know? Uh, somebody, I read in the paper, uh, Chicago Tribune, that soy protein is bad for you. So, uh, that's not the Lancet, that's not you in the Journal of Medicine, that's not, you know, reputable magazine. So we have to really go to the source. And the, and the issue about soy protein, if that's what you're talking about, uh, if you want to get to the scientific part of it, is basically there were 17 studies done and soy protein with the purpose to try to find soy protein can cause cancer. And the studies, 16 studies, were it did not show any cancer. As a matter of fact, the patient did better. In one study, there was cancer out of 17. That's what they reported. Exactly. That's the one they reported. Not only that, they neglected to report that she also was a smoker and she drank lots of alcohol.